everybody. This video is to walk you guys through your first essay assignment, and this essay is a very short one, given that we are moving so quickly. Um, but essentially, you're going to contextualize one of the works that you read in this unit. Uh, write a literary analysis of that work, so something you've probably done many times in high school um, or other classes. Um, you're going to be looking at different literary elements within that analysis, so you can look at things like characterization, conflict, setting, um, I already said conflict twice, apologies, um, so on and so forth. Uh, you will also want to incorporate contextual elements related to the author's life or historical con or historical impact. So think about the political, social, economic, or philosophical changes which were taking place during this period as this new American quote unquote identity was being formed by these early settlers. So essentially what you're doing is most importantly you are analyzing the text as a piece of literature. So don't let it become a biography essay, don't let it become a history essay. You need to do what's done in the lectures, which is analyze the text in depth using these literary elements to guide your analysis. So if you're looking, for example, at Columbus, you could look at character development in his text and look at him as the primary character. Your thesis argument could be uh, Columbus is a protagonist or Columbus is an antagonist in this text because X, Y, and Z. And then you could bring in other literary elements to support that. So you could talk about the syntax, the choice of the use of the word I, um, or the first person point of view in the letter format, um, and how that emphasizes his focus on himself. And uh, you could also use um, imagery to talk, you could also talk about the imagery that he uses to try and emphasize the importance of the investment from Ferdinand and Isabella um, and his voyages. And then thirdly, you could look at the, um, I'm not sure, it, this, the language or the symbolism or something around how he uh, describes certain aspects of the native population as very dehumanizing and therefore easily conquerable. Um, that might be a, a very quick structure of what an argument could look like in this case that's really focused on the literary work and is literary analysis first and secondarily looking at how his biography or the historical context plays into that. Because obviously, in both of the letters and in, in, in uh, Bradstreet's text as well, the author's identity or the historical situation are very important um, in understanding those texts from a literary analysis standpoint. So some things you can kind of think about. Um, think about why the text matters. Why does it matter that we read and understand this text in terms of the larger perspective? So why does it matter that we see Columbus in a certain light via his letters versus how we see him in our social um, constructed history of him? Uh, why does it matter that we see Devaka the way that he does, the way he describes the native population, the way he talks about the Christian sect um, in in this case in this letter how, why does it matter that we see Anne Bradstreet's sort of private world as one of the first transatlantic female poets or as a woman in early Puritan society why does that matter why is that important um, think about how the author and the work influence or impact the social political or economic changes that were taking place at this time um, how do they fit or maybe how do they not fit into that new quote-unquote American identity? How do they help shape these ideals? Um, and then how do they approach whatever topic it is they're talking about? So what's the message they're trying to get across and then how do they achieve that? So how is that historically situated? Um, you should have a clear thesis and main ideas in your analysis. So your introduction should include a thesis claim. Um, and then you should have main ideas where you are supporting your, your claims through evidence from the text. So that means you pull out specific quotes that show your audience what you're talking about. So for example, if I talk about Bradstreet's um, relationship with, her, uh, with her herself, if I want to talk about her fear of dying um, from pregnancy and how that's conveyed in the text, I'm going to pull out lines from the poem that show that to the audience. Same thing with, say, Cabeza de Vaca, when he's talking about how he, um, for example, how he describes the native population in certain terms as in a very humanistic aspect. Um, I would pull out quotes that show that, such as him describing certain traditions or certain foods or whatever it might be. 
Um, so make sure that, again, that you're pulling out those words, those phrases, those passages that show your audience these things because that's your evidence to support your main ideas. And then you're going to wrap up your argument by doing a quick conclusion which restates your thesis and your main ideas in new words. So your essay needs to be one and a half to two pages in length. Um, so that means it has to be to the middle of the second page at minimum. You Now you're always welcome to write more, you just can't write less. If you write less, you'll have points taken off. Um, and it's due on Sunday, June 4th at 11.59 p.m. So meet the minimum page length, uh, proper MLA formatting is required, and uh, make sure that, remember that everything is checked with plagiarism, so you can look at those plagiarism reports um, as soon as you get, as soon as you submit them uh, the same as I can. Um, so you'll be assessed in making sure you have good close analysis of the literary work and its major concepts, as well as one of the authors, um, I'm sorry, as well as the author's identity and st historical context, but ensure above all else, once again, that this is a literary analysis essay. It's not a biography, it's not a history essay. Um, make sure you have good concrete evidence to support your claims from both the primary and the secondary resources. Um, in this case, there is no secondary source required, but if you choose to pull them in, you're more than welcome to. Just make sure you have um, good solid quotes from those sources to help support your claims. Proper page length, MLA formatting, and citations is needed, so in-text citations and then also on the bibliography, um, and a good fully developed essay structure like we talked about, and good clear organization of all your ideas. So the topic and the, the choice of content that you talk about around that text is yours. Um, it's purposely broad because I want you guys to choose the things that are most interesting to you about these texts. There is so much that you could talk about within all three of these texts that I want you to make sure you kind of narrow your argument to maybe one primary element and think about how you can construct your essay around that, that element. So don't try to do 10 things, try to do one thing or two things really well and dive deep into those points of analysis. So some of the ideas of things you could write about, literary elements you could talk about specific to these texts would be things like characterization. So you could look at archetypes, you could look at the protagonist versus antagonist role, you could look at the major or secondary characters, look at the development, are they flat, are they static, are they round, are they dynamic, why, what makes them that way. Um, you could think about literary devices like similes, metaphors, personifications, foreshadowing, flashbacks. You could look at the structure, so look at dramatic arcs, conflict, which would be man versus man, man versus society, so on and so forth. You could look at the point of view, the narration, is it first person, is it third person omniscient, why does that matter? You can look at things like themes, symbols, motifs, um, allusions, and then secondarily, like I said, you look at the historical context. You look at the author's biography and background. You can look at the historical events surrounding the, uh, the work. You could look at the larger ethical, moral, or social issues that are at play in the text as well. So again, purposely broad, choose the text that's most interesting to you, and then within that, choose the um, literary element or elements that you want to talk about that are mo in most interesting to you. And remember, the key is to keep your argo narrow, concrete, and uh, very well developed and thorough. So let me know if you guys have any questions, but otherwise, go ahead and move on uh, to the next assignment.